Okay, so our next speaker is going to be Roshi Wang, encoding the past, present, and future of self-motion in the rat posterior parietal cortex. Imagine yourself in your home late at night, and the power suddenly goes on. You walk out into the hallway, find a path to the storage room, and proceed to light up a candle. How are you able to accomplish that with your minimal visual information? The answer is that our brain is capable of taking self-motion, such as personal speed and movement, to tell us where we are in the environment. This is what we call path integration. The human brain is able to create a memory of our self-movement and speed across time in order to help us understand where we are in the space. The vestibular system is located in our inner ear. It senses our speed or movement actions in space and sends those information into a distributed spatial navigational network. This distributed network includes several brain regions, such as anterior thalamus, hippocampus, internal cortex, and the parietal cortex. And what we will focus on here today is the parietal cortex, mainly because there are about 50% of its neurons respond to navigational actions. This is true for rodents, humans, and monkeys. Routes can take many different forms. There are a few different ways we can think about a route, such as a shape of a route, or we can think about routes by a series of locations we encounter in the environment, such as point A, B, C, etc., or a series of actions, such as going straight, making a right turn, or making a left turn. For the cortex neurons, are able to map our location on a route based on directional actions, such as linear speed, how fast we're going straight, or angular speed, how fast we're turning left or turning right. To see how our brain uses this information to create a representation of space, we can look at a study done by Professor Neat in 2006, which examined neurons from the parietal cortex of rats as they navigate through various pathways. In one section of the experiment, the rat was required to navigate from the starting point to the goal site, as shown on graph A, or in reverse, as shown on graph B. In this condition, the shape of two routes were the same, and the sequence of actions the animal needs to make is the same, such as going straight, make a right turn, then going straight, make a left turn, then going straight to reach the goal site. We can differentiate between the two by the direction of action. And below is the fire activity of one single neuron when the rat was on condition A and condition B. And what we're looking at here is the shape of the shaded gray area. The shaded gray area for A and B are nearly identical. This means that the fire activity of these individual neurons did not change, even though the direction of action between A and B is different. This would mean that the fire activity of some parietal cortex neurons are modulated by the shape or space defined by the rot itself and the sequence of actions, regardless of envir environmental context or the direction of movement. We will refer to this as a rot specific firing activity. By taking into account the current linear and angular speed, some part of cortex neurons can determine what direction the rat was going at that time, as well as the rat's location along the route. So in a recent study done by Alexander et al. 22, it was found that neurons displayed different firing activity to the same speed when the rat was performing different tasks. Each rat was trained on two conditions, free foraging and pursuit. In the free foraging, the rat was wandering around rather randomly in search of food items on an open arena. And in the pursuit condition, instead of random movements, the rat followed a laser, which was shown on the floor. The graph on this slide demonstrates how one parietal neuron displays different responses to both pursuit and free foraging conditions. The purple line is the pursuit, and the gray line is free foraging. We read this neuron tuning curve graphs by looking at the peak of each graph. We can see that the purple line has a higher peak than the gray line. And we see by looking at tuning of a single neuron for activity under both conditions that the tuning of angular and linear speed can change. This means that the parietal cortex neurons is adaptive. Another takeaway from Alex's study was that 
Rather than only reflecting animals' behavior at the present time, neurons in the parietal cortex can encode information across a short period of time. For example, neuron A fires for animals' past right turn action, and neuron B fires when we're going straight in the present time, and neuron C fires when we're about to make a left turn in the near future. Together, this group of neurons reflect a small portion of the trajectory to help us understand where we are along a route. This is what we call path integration across time, and it plays an important role in spatial navigation and spatial working memory. The significance of that path integration is it could, could potentially help us understand how a system that is very sensitive to linear and angular speed can end up with a route specific bar activity. So across these three trajectories, there are five left turns. We can see if there's one neuron that is very se sensitive to a left turning action, it only, it only fired for the first and third condition when that left turn is preceded by another left turn. And it did not fire for the middle condition, which is marked as two. This means that the parietal cortex neuron is sensitive to the series of action, not just the action at the current time. And as I mentioned before, in Xander 22 study, in both for foraging and pursuit conditions, the animal's behavior is rather random. However, in reality, rats and humans move through a very complex environment along lines or pathways. So we develop a task that puts the rat in this context. This task would require the rat to re remember for longer duration of time where they have been to and where they plan to go. In our experiment, we used a triple T maze with four embedded internal pathways marked as one, two, three, and four. Reward sites are located at the end of each internal path. There are also two external paths, nine and 10, for the rat to return back to the starting point from reward sites. The spatial working memory for the animal is relatively simple. By beginning at the starting point, the rat is required to navigate through the internal path to the reward site without turning back in the middle. The rat would receive rewards when revisiting a rewarded site only after collecting all other rewards. The data for my project is from a graduate student named Alex in Dr. Nitz's lab. There were 236 cells recorded through 67 reporting sessions from five different rats. What we're looking at here is how each neuron responds to animal's behavior when performing the triple T task. So on the left is the rate map from neuron 61 as seen from the above looking down to the maze. The animals start at the starting point and going down, downstream. It described the neuron fire activity when the rat was moving in the maze. The neuron fire activity is high at those yellow spots when animal makes left turns. The right is the linear rise the rate map for each path. Each path that we saw before is linearized as x-axis, and the y-axis is neural fire activity. This, this neuron showed increased fire activity at some left turns, and other left turns, the neuron showed low fire activity. So from both graphs, we can see that this neuron is sensitive to some, but not every single left turn. This is supporting what I mentioned before, that neural fire activity can be modulated by a sequence of actions. Then what we did is to process it to generate tuning curves for each neuron in order to assess how they respond to actions. Here are tuning curves for neuron 61 and 5 as examples. By looking at where the peak is on each graph, we can know that for the neuron 61, which is shown on the left, this neuron is tuned to high angular speed where animal is either making a left turn or right turn. And this neuron, neuron 61, is also sensitive to the medium linear speed. And neuron five is tuned to high linear speed when animal is going straight. These two neurons are example of different neuron of tuning for specific angular and linear speed. And in total, we have 236 neurons. Each one has a slightly different tuning curve, which means that they can encode speed at different levels. We sorted these neurons by their max fire rates or the peak of their tuning curve in response to angular and linear speed. For the x-axis, angular speed was sorted from the farthest the left turn action to the farthest the right turn action. And for the right graph, which is the linear speed, 
it was sorted from zero to 60 centimeter per second as shown here. Bright yellow indicates a high fire activity and blue indicates a low fire activity. By looking at the population of linear velocity tuning curve, which is shown on the right, we see a similarity with, with what Alexander 22 found in graph B, which is the purple and yellow graph. This graph demonstrates that one particle neuron is usually tuned to a certain linear speed, and the whole population of the particle cortex together can encode any most linear speed from zero to the highest. However, when we look at the population of angular velocity tuning curve, many individual, many individual particle cortex neurons can encode angular velocity for turning left and turning right. These neurons do not have the same firing patterns as linear speed tuning, and this is also different from what Alexander 22 found as shown in graph A. As I said earlier, particle cortex neurons are sensitive to not only the current linear and angular speed, but also to the past and future of self motion. So these two graphs are the angular and the linear speed tuning curve of neuron 61. Our rate of the neuron relative to angular speed at the current time is time lag zero, as shown in red line. Above the red line is the fire rate of the neuron to the angular and linear speed of the past, and below the red line is the future. The brighter yellow indicates the higher fire activity of the neuron. And there are bright yellow clusters on the graph, which means that this neuron fired strongly for past, present, and future collectively across a short period of time. So our next goal was to see how long this period of time or integration window was. So what we did here is to test our ability of decoding part of neurons fire activity by using the fire rate of the neuron to pre predict or decode the linear and angular speed in the past, present, and future. We see that for this neuron, which is shown on the left side, it can predict the linear speed of the animal for four second window in the past. And on the right is a graph from Alexander et al. 22 study. The green line refers to the free foraging condition. The purple line is the pursuit condition. The integration window for the free foraging is about one second and is about two seconds for the pursuit condition. So pursuit condition is longer than the free foraging condition because the rat paid more attention when chasing the laser pointer. And in our data show on the left, the integration window is even longer under the track running condition. Therefore, in a complex environment, the integration window is longer when the rat performs a complex task. In conclusion, there is a path integration in the particle cortex across time in well-structured space. The structured environment appears to support the particle cortex in codes of actions across long period of time. It also aids the ability of the particle cortex to integrate information across a longer time window. The particle cortex is capable of integrating trajectories across a fairly long time period, many seconds, in a way that contributes to the performance of a complex task. Thank you. Any questions? Okay. Next question. Thank you so much.